Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Today I want to talk about aliens other than the gray aliens. Uh, there have been reports over the decades uh, involving alien species that look unlike the normal gray aliens. Well, we say normal, but that seems to be the normal style that people see. The, the short gray beings with the big almond-shaped eyes, uh, you know, big heads, bald you know, and of course, the gray alien associates, uh, the on board associates, uh, who seem to be reptilians and insectoid praying mantis types. And all th these beings seem to be involved in some sort of hybridization program involving uh, the abduction of men and women and removing their. Uh, removing sperm from men and eggs from women and creating uh, a race of alien hybrids that look just like human beings and but aren't uh, and then somehow I guess uh, putting it uh, mixing them up among the human race as who knows for what reason spies or some future purpose that's yet unknown we don't know but there's been all sorts of different kinds of uh, aliens reported over the years in addition to the common gray you know it seems like the, the for uh, there's no question about it the, these gray beings these short gray beings are the predominant alien being that people see uh the they're the ones that seem to abduct people most of the time but every now and then you hear of a case that involves different kinds of aliens uh, a lot of these cases I've talked about numerous times on the podcast including the uh, 1973 Pascagoula Mississippi incident where two guys were fishing on a dock uh, and all of a sudden a spaceship shows up and these robots kind of beings come out with pincers for hands drag them on the ship and uh, examine them and then let them go they these beings look you know they look nothing like greys or, or praying mantis or any of those kind of things that are usually reported and then of course uh there was the kentucky goblin spree from uh, the 1950s where there was quite a few witnesses that saw these little f f beings that basically floated around a farmhouse uh, terrorizing this family and uh they were shot at and the, the bullets did nothing uh basically bounced off them made a sound like a bucket when they bounced off them um uh, I'm not going to talk about those cases because I did talk about those before, but I want to talk about some other cases. Uh, and the one case I want to talk about is something that happened in 1954 in Italy. It's called the Sanina Italy UFO Encounter of 1954. And here's an article from Open Minds, and I will leave the link for this, of course. And I'm going to read this article. On the morning of November 1st, 1954, Rosa Danelli had risen early to attend church services in the town of Sanina, Italy. She was carrying a handful of carnations, which were to be placed at the altar of the Madonna Pellegrina. On the trip to town, she followed the footpath that leads through fields and thickets. She went barefoot, hoping to avoid getting her new shoes dirty. Rosa had taken this trip multiple times before and never expected to encounter anything unusual. Arriving in the middle of a small clearing, she came across a very strange looking craft. The unknown object resembled a diamond shaped spindle or two ice cream cones attached to by their widest ends. It measured seven feet high and three feet wide. The strange craft had a brown metallic polished exterior color with three landing gear legs. Rosa could not hear any sound emanating from the craft. An elliptical shaped white colored protrusion was located at the midsection of the craft. The lower section of the object had an open hatch door which revealed two seats. Astonished at what she was witnessing, Rosa was further surprised to find two small beings who emerged from behind the craft. They appeared to look like men, but were actually the size of small children, around three feet tall. Their noses were of normal, normal shape, but their upper lips were slightly curved in the center. Eventually, the beings approached Rosa and seemed to be friendly. They were wearing one-piece gray-colored overalls, which extended down to their feet. They also wore gray-colored capes on their backs, and their ears were concealed by two leather-looking discs, which formed a rudimentary helmet, a small band wrapped around their foreheads. 
In an attempt to strike up a conversation with Rosa, the small beings uttered the following unintelligible expression, Lula, Lola, Lola, Lou. Then the two beings approached Rosa, who was now in a state of shock. They proceeded to snatch the carnations out of her hand, but then quickly returned a few of them, keeping a total of five. Then, as though they were examining the biological makeup of the flowers and laughing during the process, the beings threw the remaining flowers into the opening of the spindle-shaped craft. Soon thereafter, the small beings reached inside their craft and took out two small white packages, which were circular in shape. As they turned towards Rosa, they found her running from the scene. By the time she covered a distance of 300 feet from the craft, Rosa looked back one final time only to discover that the beings and the strange craft had mysteriously vanished. Now, this is a case that even Jacques Vallée was very interested in, and it's been talked about for decades. It's actually, I, I didn't know about this case until probably uh, within the past six months I, I, I learned about it. Uh, there's some more details here in a different article about these beings. This is from thelivingmoon.com, and I also leave the link for this. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, this is what it describes here. It says, uh, the two little beings approached her with friendly expressions on their faces. She had plenty of time to make a thorough examination of them so that she was afterwards able to describe them in the minutest details. About one meter in height, they were wearing a sort of gray overall, all in one piece, including the feet. On their backs, they had sort of cloaks of a gray material, and over the one-piece overall, they wore a sort of, sort of doublet fastened right up to the collar with little buttons like shining stars. Their trousers were tightly fitting, like the long underpants that our men wear in the winter. Their faces, crowned by helmets, were normal but small. Both were no taller than a five-year-old infant, but their bodies were in proportion. It would have taken two of those things to make a man, she said, but they were very fine looking, even though rather odd, rather old, excuse me. Uh, anyway, it just is a strange story. Like, you know, you read something like this and you, and this person at the time, it was a big deal you know, in, in Italy, especially in that part of Italy. People were talking about it. And it's just amazing that, you know, somebody would not make this up. I mean, why would some peasant woman... You know, just make this story up. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I believe this woman's actually encountered these weird-looking short men, basically. Uh, that's what they look like, uh, according to her. Um, it's just an amazing little story. And But this is just one of these cases of, you know, these beings that are showing up at a time. I mean, this is only uh, 1954. You're only talking, we're only seven years into the... Uh, the the UFO since the UFO wave of 1947. I mean, basically all these UFOs start showing up, flying saucers all over the world. Basically, people are seeing weird objects uh, starting in 1947. Of course, there were things seen before that, but it really wasn't until 1947 when these things were started to uh, when people started to see these things all the time and report on them. And and of course, there was all sorts of people who claimed to see the these things landed uh, uh they, they actually saw landed craft i mean there's all all kinds of reports during this time period but you, you wonder okay now, these beings here are completely different than anything else that you know you, you never really see a description like this ever so um you know i, I you know you makes you wonder like like my, my uh, here's a theory i have uh you know, what if in 1947 it was not just gray beings showing up, but all sorts of beings showing up? You know, and, and, and somehow Earth was discovered by some uh, uh, group of different races at the same time, like some part of some sort of interplanetary NATO or something, right? Hey, we found this uh, new race of beings. They're, 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 they're using atomic weapons. They're to use, dropping atomic bombs on each other now. Uh, we better look into this. So they start sending out, uh, you know, different uh, representatives from all their different planets, right, to check out what's going on on Earth, right? So for, for over the course of a certain number of years, maybe. And then uh, what happens is that maybe they decide, well, okay, we need to do something about these beings and and basically what the grays and the and the and the insect insect aliens what they really are maybe they're just 
hires. You know, they're, they're aliens for hire. They're, they're, they they were basically, uh, you know, they bid on the pro on the project here w amongst this group of of uh, different alien races. They bid on a project here to do this to be in charge of this hybridization program. What if that's what this is all about? Because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's all these different kinds of uh, strange looking beings showing up here in addition to the greys especially during these early years you don't really hear about these other other things today and of course you hear about nordics you know these tall nordics for all we know they might be hybrids you know um but you don't usually hear about these kind of things you know these you know things that look like little men you know in, in one piece suits you don't really hear these kind of things and i don't think this lady was making it up uh, and this isn't the only case. I mean, of course, there was all these different kinds of cases going on back in the 50s where people were ex uh, seeing these strange looking creatures that and, and, and a lot of times there was nothing to match them with. No, nobody else saw it, just these people, this, just this group of people or this, this person. And this is one of those cases that there's really not any other case that uh, that really is anything like this. I mean, they're all different, it seems. Of course, now, again, when we're talking about the greys, that all seems the same, right? But again, that really didn't seem to start up until, you know, the 60s. I mean, again, all of this is speculation. Of course, you know, a lot of people who investigate this, like a lot of the uh, psycho uh, psychiatrists and, and, and professors like uh, David M. Jacobs that look into this, Bud Hopkins, John Mack, uh, I mean, some of them people that they've interviewed, they they claim to have been getting abducted since the 1920s. I mean, that seems like to be the earliest time uh, where uh, an abduction apparently happened with aliens. So who knows, right? But if you look at the at the way things are laid out, it seems like at first, again, this is just pure speculation on my part. I'm not saying this is true. I don't know, but it just seems like it could possibly be the case. That early on, a, a bunch of different races were showing up here, possibly from all different kinds, of, you know, all different planets. And and then maybe a decision was made. Okay, uh, we can't let this violent group of beings advance anymore on their own. We need to get control of this group. Uh, we're not going to destroy them, of course, not outright, uh, but uh, we need to uh, we need to have a hybridization program. And then the the greys, you know insects praying mantises are called in you know to do the job and maybe that's what you know like when the hills were initially abducted in the 60s maybe they're like one of the earliest cases you know villas boas in 1957 you know one of the early cases test cases trying to figure out what they need to do and how it's going to work and then of course as the 60s and 70s roll you know roll along it just seems like it's picking up then um I don't know. It's just it's again it's all pure speculation. But again, that this is one of those cases along with all bunch of myriad of other cases where there's these beings that are definitely decidedly unlike the greys at all. And yet they're showing up. Now, you know, a lot of people will look at this and say, "Well, this is, you know, this lady is just, you know, making she made it all up." But how how do you know that? I mean, you don't know that. In fact, uh, there, there was people that looked at this later on, and they actually found the marks in the ground. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit more of this. Uh, there was uh, an, an investigation afterward. Uh, uh, police went in there to investigate the affair, and they found deep cavity in the ground where this thing apparently was, was, had landed. You know, And the hole was also seen by a chief, in, chief inspector of the police uh, from the local police uh, so there was other people that saw this and, and there was other witnesses that attested to this lady uh, that there was no reason that she would make something like this up now of course some people will say well maybe she was having a hallucination and that seems like a pretty vivid hallucination to me right seeing some craft dealing with little beings you know and, and, and a hallucination that leaves marks in the ground I, I just don't see like people like this making this making a story up like this it just doesn't make any sense to me